So let's move on to the next topic. We got two more topics for you folks listening. I hope you're enjoying the video. We're doing our best for you. We got disappointing fighter of the year. Another new topic. Disappointing fighter of the year. And I'm going to give this over to Boxing Beast and Ross first. Boxing Beast and Ross, who's your disappointing fighter of the year? Well, Derek Chisora didn't do very well. Eubank Jr. was very disappointing, I have to say. Um, but I'm going to give it to Tim Bradley. You know, he flopped out against Pacquiao. You know, just for a terrible fight. For a terrible fight. And he was supposed to, even though, you know, everyone said it was a robbery against Chavez. Didn't look good. Didn't look good in the closing rounds, you know. And um, I don't know where you go from here. I'm going to give it to Tim Bradley. Okay, Tim Bradley. You think that Tim Bradley is a is a, a product of not following his game plan and just brawling, or do you think he was overmatched? Uh, well, you know, my theory is the accumulation of tough fights is catching up with the bro. That's that's my theory. Okay, okay, good answer. Uh, we got Tim Bradley for Boxing Beast and Wines. I'm going to move it over to Christian Caban. Who's your disappointing fight of the year, my brother? Go ahead. Again, I'm going with the homie, Gary Russell Jr. He really disappointed me in that fight against Lamacheco. We was giving him props about he was going. he's a good prospect. He was talking junk in all his videos for the past two years about he's better than Brona, better than all these other guys that's getting credit. And he got on the big stage and he laid an egg. And I'm very disappointed in him. I'm disappointed in him, too, and I don't even have a follow-up question for Gary Russell because I already asked you one, so we're going to move on. I'm going to go to UK Boxing Blogger. Who's your disappointed fighter of the year? Um, yeah. To me, I've got two. Well, it's either Lara. Uh, now, I'm going to go with Sean Porter. Really because from the way he, pulled, he beat Paulie Malinardi and he obviously won the title of Alexander in dominating fashion after the Paulie fight, he, he elevated himself to not just a decent world champion, in, in, not, not by any, uh, for any longevity or anything like that, just in, just in short-term performance basis. You know how the boxing world can just get hyped overnight he did and I expected at least a decent run but then he obviously bumped into Kell Brook and he got beat by an, uh, uh, an up and coming great fighter but just the hype train that got put on Porter was such a great win the way he ruthlessly destroyed Paulie you know it was just a, a big letdown for, uh, for Sean Porter I'm not trying to say he he's a bad fighter or anything just but for the hype that I had in my mind um, the way it all just went. You know, it's, 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 I have to say Sean Porter. All right, with you picking Sean Porter, where do you think he should go next, considering that we did the interview with him and his father was saying that they took him off rankings and whatnot and they're trying to disrespect him, taking him completely off rankings after he loses his title. Where do you think he should go next? Where do you think his next move should be? Well, I think that's out of order because I still think Sean Porter is one of the best world ways out there. You know, to me, in the Kell Brook fight, he should have been trying to break his arms free, try to fight on the inside a little bit. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I personally feel that he, he didn't want to be at a certain rage with Kell Brook because every, every time he did, he, he was he was defending himself by getting close. I think he was he was he was quite safe, straight like in in Kell's grip. Because any time he was coming in and, 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 and at mid to long range, he was getting hit. You know, so he, he was like a defense thing. Because he, cause he didn't want to get pushed back by Kel Eber. So he had to come forward. He had no option. You know, because I didn't think, I think he felt the power of Kel Brook straight away. And, and he couldn't deal with the range and straight shots of Kel Brook. So that was more him in defense, in my opinion. But, you know, I, I think moving forward... I think he just needs to go back to the drawing board, get a nice, decent name, uh, work on his speed a little bit more, mixing it up uh, like he did in the Devin Alexander fight, and, and he'll be all right. He'll be back to being a world title contender because the world awaits a big, strong division. You know, there's a load of names that are all equally as um, 
good as each other, in my opinion, below Floyd and Pacquiao. You know, you know, and they'll be the next, the next generation in the next year or so. So he'll be involved in some great fights going ahead. But if he just starts from scratch and, and and moves towards a world title again, I'd like to see that he's still a great fighter. Well, Kel Brook did tell him about that chocolate brownie punch, whatever the hell he was talking about. He told him it, it meant something, and it looked like it affected Sean Porter's uh, game plan in that fight. i got to be honest about that. But let me move it over to EJ Boxing oh. Live. Oh, sorry, yeah. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead, Beats. You got something to say? No, I was going to say, um, no, I'm going to let everyone do this category, and I'm gonna, I was going to try me before you we move on. All right, um, go, ahead, uh, go ahead, EJ Boxing Live. Um, you're a uh, disappointed fighter of the year. Well, my uh, EJ Boxing Live disappoint, disappointing fire of the year, um, 2014, goes to Del Boy Derek Chisora. Now, I know any of you knows that um, I, I'm been in the gym, you know, like reporting on, you know, that's why I do my investigative reporting, like um, seeing close up, coming to the media days and being up close. Um, Derek, if you don't know, was the, Euro current, was, the, was the current European champion. He does not doubt Malik Rose. Um, no, Malik Rose. <laughs> King, what's his Malik? Not Malik Rose, his name? Malik, uh, Malik Scott. Malik, Malik Scott. take a dive, Scott. Yeah, Malik, oh. take, Malik Scott. <laughs> Malik King Scott, baby. Yeah, King Malik Scott. King Scott. And he floored King Ping Johnson. And he's coming in Tyson Fury thing. And you're thinking his payback, you know, Tyson Fury took his first, took his first uh, loss. And um, you thought he was going to perform and actually see him working the bags every day. And I thought he was going to perform. And he came there, and then nothing was there. And it was terrible. It was depressing, and I was doomed for the whole week. I bet money on the fight. I seen the guy flow up. It was like, I thought I had the inside information. I thought technique, talked to the trainer, I saw him fight. And I just thought, you know, he's on a higher at this moment. He's definitely going to win. And that fight, that was so disappointing. So disappointing that I, I, I couldn't even put into words. And the repercussions are so much now. The, the old boy is in trouble with the law right now. He has to do community service. You know, he attacked a road a road rage incident will happen. This is just the day, and it's just propelled into into some sad thing. I don't know what's going to happen next with the old boy, but performance for me, um, fight are definitely disappointing. Fight not overall because obviously up until this point, but that in the ring, disappointment. It was depressing. It was depressing, and people are still recovering from it right now. I'm still recovering. It's just terrible, but that's the. Being that you was in the in the gym with them for the lead up to that fight, and you were telling us about how good he was looking, how how far from the game plan do you think that Del Boy fought? In your opinion, didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He, I know the referee was warning for low blows. He just didn't do anything. He went in there and just he didn't do anything. It, just, it was terrible. Apparently, he got thumbed in the eye by Tyson Fury in the second fight. But you know, some people's been for worse. I see um, Danny Williams fighting one arm against Thingy Mark Potter. I've seen you seen people fight for your adversity, but he didn't do anything. He just chased Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury just chased Southpaw on him. It was just a one-sided beating, and for people watching, it was it, it was very, very, very disappointing. I know what Del Boy does with his career now. Apparently, he might be fighting sometime next year, deep in next year. But after now, you just find that community service. It just looks very disappointing for him, and it's a sad thing. It's just very sad and very disappointing. I can't, I can't even put into words how. How disappointing it was, and for people who was, oh, I was telling everyone that Del Boy's going to do this, Del Boy's going to do that, and nothing happened. It was, it was, it was disheartening for real. All right, thank you, DJ Boxing Live, and I'm going to go to my disappointing fighter of the year, and I was going to go with Devin Alexander, just for the performance he put up against Americon, following him around the ring and just not cutting off the ring. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, and then, the, then when he lost to Sean Porter, just clearly he. Be so the crowd, but we, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a curveball. My point fight of the year is Manny Pacquiao, and I'm gonna tell you why. Manny Pacquiao is fighting nothing but soft touches. Now Bob Aaron is trying to sell us uh, Vargas. Jesse Vargas is the next opponent. Floyd. Okay, this guy fought Chris Algieri, who who before he fought. Uh, before he fought Ruslan Provodnikov, which is, I thought he won the fight, so I'm not going to use it as excuse. But a lot of people thought he didn't. 
he 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 hadn't fought anybody who was a kickboxer. Okay, so there's no reason for you to even be fighting this guy. And if Floyd would have fought him, they'd have crucified him. But when Manny Pacquiao fights him, it's a good it's a good fight, right? Right or whatever. This that was a joke of a fight, and he did what he was supposed to do. So I don't give him no credit for that. And now they're talking about him fighting Jesse Vargas. Stop it. The, the most disappointing fighter of the year, in my opinion, is Manny Pacquiao because of his opponents. And that's my opinion. All right, so now we did most no, disappointing fight of the year. First one, um, I think another contender for disappointing fight of the year was Danny Garcia. Got the gift decision against Herrera, and then he got the cherry apple picking <laughs> Rod Salka, and he needs to get back on the So we can move on from that, yeah. All right, uh, since you brought up my boy Swift, you know I'm a big proponent of Swift. What do you think has gone wrong with Swift this year? Because you're right. He went from up here, and he's basically slowly lowered himself down back. Because once he beat Matisse, it seems like it's been a slow decline of bringing himself back. Because you know, before he fought Matisse, he had a lot of hate. And and he, he kind of got above the hate because he fought the guy that they all said he was afraid of. But since then, he's he had, like you said, he had the controversial fight against Herrera. And then he just fought some fucking bum bum dude from Pittsburgh that he should never been in the ring with. And he got a knock on He's talking shit about that. But that doesn't mean nothing. Even though I love to see dudes like Salk get put to sleep. But it doesn't mean anything in the greater scheme of things. But what do you think he needs to do to gain that respect back, Beach, since you brought him up? Well, it's quite simple. Step up the level of opposition and win fairly and you know, step your game up. <laughs> I mean, who, who do you think he should be fighting? Man, Jesse Vargas would have been good. Um, and like, um, and, and, and Lamont Peterson. They're the fights. They're the fights, you know. Broner. Okay, I agree with you. I think you should fight Lamont Peterson and Broner. Forget Jesse Vargas. Jesse Vargas is living off gift decisions. Nobody cares about Jesse Vargas. But Lamont Peterson and Broner, yes, I agree with you. But him and Broner are very good friends. I don't think that fight's happening anymore. They're always making excuses why that fight's not going to happen because they're such good friends. They're playing that friendship bullshit. And and then let me make a little quick note. Um, Mauricio Herrera won that fight um, last weekend. Um, and he got robbed once again. And I'm just getting sick and tired of Mauricio Herrera getting robbed. over. He got robbed over Benavides in my opinion 